I'm Larry Anglosano at Aviation Consumer Magazine here at Honda Aircraft Company headquarters in Greensboro, North Carolina, where Honda has invested big for the HA420 Honda Jet. Now, even in a down market, Honda has already delivered over 40 aircraft and 15 in the first quarter of 2017. Let's take a close look at the Honda Jet with Honda's manager of corporate flight operation and demonstration, Tim Frazier. The, the Honda Jet was certified in uh, December of uh, 2015. Uh, some of the specs on the airplane include uh, our maximum altitude is flight level 430. The aircraft will go at uh, 422 knots true at uh, flight level 310. And our range is uh, 1,223 nautical miles. Um, on climb out, the airplane will do 3,990 feet and it takes approximately 26 minutes to get to flight level 430. The engines are over the wing mounted uh, system, uh, which is, uh, if you look at it uh, from the side, they are conventionally positioned but unconventionally uh, uh, mounted. It uh, creates efficiency, allows us to have a larger uh, tube in the aircraft for, for passenger comfort, and also uh, allows us to have a larger lav area. If you look at our baggage compartment, our baggage compartment is leading in its class. Uh, we can put approximately 400 pounds of luggage in the back, and uh, we also have a luggage compartment in the front that uh, uh, will, uh, the capacity on that's 100 pounds. As far as structure goes, the, uh, the airframe is a composite material. We do have a, aluminum wings and an aluminum tail. Uh, the fuel system, uh, the, the, the wing holds two fuel tanks in the main wing and a center tank. Uh, we also have a bladder tank, so the aircraft has four tanks. It is a gravity-fed system, and, it, and it's fueled through a single port, not single uh, point refueling. So when you fuel the airplane, it is gravity-fed. Uh, also, when you refuel it, it goes into the main tanks first, and then goes to the center tank, and then fills up the bladder tank last. The engines are uh, a joint venture between GE and Honda. Uh, they produce uh, 2,050 uh, pounds of thrust each, and they are derated to 1997. The fuel burn is uh, at flight level 430 is between 295 pounds a side to 310 pounds a side. Pretty efficient for, for an aircraft. As optional equipment, we uh, do have the ability to put speed brakes on the aircraft. There's no speed limitation on the, uh, on the speed brakes. They are located in the uh, uh, tail section of the aircraft. Uh, one unique part about having the speed brakes in the tail is you don't get a normal uh, uh, speed brake uh, uh, activation bump that you would normally get in a two position speed brake that is conventionally mounted on the wings. And then we'll talk a little bit about the G3000. Some of the unique features that the Honda has uh, uh, embedded or located within the G3000. Uh, the first thing, if you look over here to the left, we have a checklist. That's an electronic checklist. Uh, we have a scroll wheel on the uh, yoke. Uh, we can select each of the line items. It will turn green and it will check those items off. If we hold the scroll wheel down for approximately three seconds, it will go back to the previously dis displayed items, such as a map, or a, uh, an instrument approach chart, or, and then if we hold it again for one second, we can go right back to the checklist. Really nice feature when you're talking about operating single pilot. Another unique feature is that we have uh, the ability to go into our uh, aircraft systems. So if we want to look at all the aircraft systems, we can look at the environmental system here and its status and, and positions of switches and valves. Uh, the electrical system, we can go into that. The fuel, uh, hydraulics, and the uh, ice detection. Uh, we All the uh, lighting in the aircraft and in, in the exterior as well uh, is uh, automatic, which means that the navigation lights come on approximately 30 minutes before sunset. They go off 30 uh, minutes after sunrise. Uh, when we move the throttle, the first throttle out of cutoff, the beacon um, comes on when we release the parking brake, the taxi light comes on. <clears throat> we do have the ability and we recognize the need to have some temperature functionality that was uh, quick access and also uh, lighting configurations such as crossing an active runway, we want to turn on our strobe lights. We still have the ability to, to do all that and we do that through this uh, systems control button. Normally we would have to go uh, three tiles deep uh, to get to uh, the thermostat and interior and exterior lighting and lighting configuration. 
So we uh, select the systems control button on the control wheel, and then as you can see, we can select the thermostat, uh, the temperature and its configuration, the interior lighting and its, uh, all of its configurations, and um, <clears throat> also the uh, exterior lighting. We can also give power control as far as temperature and fan speed goes to uh, the cabin. Uh, normally it's controlled up here in the, in the flight deck area. So some of the, those are some of the unique features that we've built into the Honda Jet to make it more ergonomically uh, friendly uh, to uh, single pilot operation. Uh, up in the top uh, panel here, the instrument cluster, we have the auto flight system, which is a AFCS panel. Um, here, uh, we, we gives us obviously gives us all the guidance we need, and uh, also it uh, can be coupled up to to the autopilot. You'll notice uh, one thing that's uh, unique is we didn't install any lights in the backlight when you select the button. Uh, we want to make sure that we set up good habit patterns. We wanted our operators to make sure that they set up good habit patterns when selecting each one of these modes, whether it be a, a, a lateral navigation or a vertical navigation, to make sure that um, they're actively uh, uh, engaged in um, the process of utilizing the AFCS. Another unique feature of the Honda Jet, especially being a light jet category aircraft, is, uh, is rudder bias. So what that does is it biases uh, the, the rudder uh, when you have an engine out. This is really important on, uh, for takeoff. Uh, so you've got a high power demand at a low speed and getting all that rudder in there and, and really kind of uh, helping you with that rudder application is really important, you know, especially single pilot operation. Uh, the actuator that's used for rudder bias is the same actuator that's used for yaw damp. Uh, uniquely, when you uh, take off and you move the landing gear up, the yaw damp uh, automatically engages, as you can see here. And then if you were to have an engine failure, that yaw damp now uh, turns into a rudder bias to assist you during engine out. Uh, the Honda Jet is a single pilot operated aircraft. Uh, it can be operated by a single pilot, obviously. And uh, uh, we have... Uh, joined forces with uh, flight safety and the training uh, process for the pilots are it's located right here in Greensboro. We do have a simulator and it takes approximately 14 days to uh, complete the transition at uh, flight safety. Uh, we start off with an operational day flow uh, which gets you right into the avionics which is the most important part of the aircraft other than doing the uh, emergency procedures in the, in the uh, simulator. Um, during that process, we start out with operational day flow. After we spend some time in the classroom, we'll go into the, the GFX, uh, GFS, which is a graphics flight simulator. It replicates all the G3000 attributes. And then uh, from that uh, two or three days, we move right back into the, uh, into the simulator and uh, start working on emergency procedures. We talk about limitations and then start to uh, really capitalize on the classroom environment using the G3000. What we're finding is, is that uh, we do have a, a mix of clients that come through the initial training here at uh, Honda Jet, uh, single engine turboprop aircraft, multi-engine multi piston aircraft, and also jet aircraft. Uh, our goal really is to create a, a, an environment that's conducive to learning. Uh, we want to create a non-threatening environment, but still understanding that we still have a, a, a certain level or desire to complete the transition. Um, also, um, the envelope of the aircraft, we're really moving from, let's say, maybe 120 to 140 knots to, to uh, a light jet category aircraft, which is a lot faster. Things happen at a larger uh, uh, at a faster pace and um, that's part of the transition is getting those pilots to understand that they are in a single pilot environment and using single pilot resource management to manage all the tools that they have available in the Garmin 3000 and while also operating the aircraft safely. Now you could read a full report on the Honda Jet in the July 2017 issue of Aviation Consumer magazine. Reporting for Aviation Consumer, I'm Larry Anglosano. Thanks for watching.